What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're reviewing the Galaxy Book 4 Edge and this features the new Snapdragon X Elite CPU from Qualcomm which promises incredible power efficiency and productivity on the go. Now, the question is, does it actually deliver? And today we're gonna to go through all of the pros and cons of this device. And there are some very important things you need to know before purchasing this laptop. And we're gonna talk about all of those things today. Now, I thoroughly tested the Galaxy Book 4 Edge in a live stream, which is linked in the description down below. Now, I believe in honesty and transparency in my reviews, and I never take a sponsorship unless I can be honest about all of the pros and cons of a product that I'm reviewing. All of that said, big shout out and thank you to Best Buy who partnered with Samsung to sponsor this video and provide the Galaxy Book 4 Edge for review. Now, what does that mean? It means that I'm gonna talk about all the features of this notebook and I'm going to give you my honest opinion about them. Now the Galaxy Book 4 Edge starts at $1349 for the 14 inch version and 16 inch version starts out at $1449 with a 512 gig SSD. There's also a one terabyte storage version for $1749. Now if you do buy these before June 30th you get a $150 gift card from Best Buy which really helps sweeten the deal and make them a better bang for the buck. Now, Samsung has really targeted users who want to be highly productive and have snappy performance in a thin and premium laptop with a great display, all well on battery. Typically, Windows laptops need to be plugged in to get their full performance. And with this one, you at least pretty much have full performance or almost full performance even when you're unplugged. And that means this laptop is excellent when doing lightweight tasks with long battery life or doing those medium to heavyweight tasks such as video editing and Photoshop while still maintaining snappy performance and good battery life. While this can do some casual gaming, I would recommend hardcore gamers look elsewhere due to poor game performance and compatibility, which we'll get into more detail later in this review. From a design perspective, the Book 4 Edge is sleek, well-built with an all-metal design, edge-to-edge -edge Gorilla Glass cover for the touch-enabled OLED display, which features 120 Hz, 2880 by 1800 resolution that I tested to reach 390 nits brightness. Now it also has over 100% P3 color gamut and it's a fantastic overall display with an anti-reflective coating that helps you see more clearly in brighter environments. Now there is some flex in this all metal design, primarily on the front, sides, back, middle and then the very center of the laptop, but that's because there's only supports in each of the corners. So overall, when you have the laptop in your lap and your legs are supporting it, the laptop feels very rigid. Now it weighs in at 3.34 pounds, which is insanely light for a 16 inch laptop. Now the hinge does have some minor wobble, which you might feel if you're in a car or very bouncy environment, but generally the hinge feels secure enough to feel good to type on and use the device at the same time. You can open it with one finger, though the hinge does not lay flat. Taking the bottom off did cut my index finger actually, so be careful if you're gonna take it off. Uh, that said, there's almost no reason to take it off. There's nothing to upgrade on the inside. Now you can see there is a dual fan design with vapor chamber cooling, and that vapor chamber did work quite well to keep the temperatures on the Snapdragon X Elite cool. Ports on this machine are good for a thin and light, but leave much to be desired compared to thicker Windows machines. There are two Type-C USB 4s, which are high data throughput and can be charged through power delivery with the included power adapter. There is also a USB-A 3.2, a headset port, and an HDMI 2.1 that supports 4K 60 Hertz refresh rate. Now the keyboard is nicely spaced with a numpad, good backlighting, and a good typing feel. The touchpad is very large and clicks really well, except maybe in the top 20% or so. Overall, the glass touchpad is one of the best I've tried on a Windows laptop, period. The 1080p webcam is high quality, but the microphone has rather poor audio recording. Here's a quick sample for you. This is me talking to the camera, and you know, now I'm gonna start typing. And we'll see how the audio sounds with me typing. I do wish this had an IR camera for camera-based Windows Hello, but the good news here is there is a fingerprint sensor and it works really well.
When it's just bass, it sounds pretty good. The mids and highs, when it's just mids and highs, they sound pretty good. But when it's mids, highs, and lows all at once, everything gets muddled together. And they're very loud as well. Keep in mind that the decibel meter here is in the middle of the laptop and the speakers are facing outward. They fire out to the left and to the right. So the actual volume would probably be a little bit louder if you put the decibel meter to the right or left of the laptop. I mean, the volume is more like closer to what like a nine laptop would be, but the clarity is more like what an 8.0 laptop would be. So I'm kind of fine trying to find the best balance between rating that. I'm gonna go with 8.3. If you already have a Samsung Galaxy phone or tablet, you can link the Galaxy Book 4 Edge to the phone or tablet, and it enables quickly transferring files and controlling these devices remotely by bringing the mouse to the edge of the display. Very, very cool integration between different devices. Now, you can also integrate Windows Copilot Plus with the Galaxy S24 so you can make calls, send messages, make appointments, all with the press of the Copilot Plus button. Now, Galaxy tablets can also be used as a secondary monitor, which is just a cool integration of the Samsung ecosystem ecosystem. Let's talk performance. So this entire system can be configured to pull between 35 to 55 watts of power when plugged in with my power meter. And that's under a full benchmarking or gaming workload, depending on which power profile you select from quiet to optimized to performance. There's about a 10 watt difference in how much the CPU pulls and about 90 to 100% of the performance is maintained on battery mode, depending on the task. So Geekbench had a very high ratio of power throughput, whether you're on battery or you're plugged in. And same thing is true for Cinebench and for gaming. While the X Elite excels against other thin and light gaming laptops, Laptops featuring CPUs with many more cores and threads and pulling 100 to 150 watts of power are still significantly faster than the Snapdragon X Elite, at least when both systems are plugged in. But there is no denying that the X Elite shines brightest against other Windows machines when all laptops are away from the wall. The Snapdragon X Elite is a much more power efficient CPU when doing heavy lifting tasks compared to competing Windows 11 laptop. Simply put, the X Elite does not require as many watts to run at a high level of performance, allowing it to excel in tasks that would normally kill the battery life very quickly in most Windows laptops. While most Windows laptops would run out of battery while video editing in only a shorter period of time, usually one and a half to two and a half hours. And honestly, while you're doing that video editing, it's probably gonna be a lot more sluggish than if the laptop was plugged in. But with the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, you can do video editing for extended periods of time of five to seven hours, depending on the demand you place on the laptop and the performance will still be snappy due to the lower power demand of the CPU. The great thing about the x -Elite is that you really do get nearly the same performance when plugged in or unplugged. The primary con here is that the x -Elite is an ARM-based CPU, meaning that all of the software must be encoded with a different instruction set. Otherwise, an emulation layer from Microsoft must be used to translate the existing x86 applications. Now, when running native ARM applications, the performance on the X Elite will be better than the currently existing Windows laptops for thin and light processors. But when running emulated apps, the performance becomes worse. The key takeaway here is that if you want to make sure that the most important applications you are going to run on the Galaxy Book 4 will have native ARM support. If they do, then you'll have a really great experience on this laptop. Now, many core Windows applications do already have native ARM support, such as Microsoft Office, Photoshop, Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, and most internet browsers. But if you're always running obscure applications, then I would recommend only buying an x -Elite laptop if you get it from a place with a generous return policy such as Best Buy, so that if the applications you need to run fail to launch or have poor application performance, you can return the notebook if you need to. So let's talk gaming performance. I tested over 30 games with the X Elite, but good quality gameplay is only possible in a select handful of titles on low settings and lower resolutions. 
Many games simply are not compatible with the ARM architecture yet and will not launch, but this will improve with time and especially as the maybe the second or third generation of the Snapdragon X Elite launches and more developers get on board with the ARM architecture. Two games I can currently highly recommend would be Baldur's Gate 3 and The Witcher 3. Now, if you want to run most modern titles, especially at higher settings and resolutions, then you'll need to stream it with cloud gaming. Now, don't expect to play competitive shooters as cloud gaming does impact the reaction time and input latency of the gameplay. And you'll also need a constant and steady internet connection that's a high quality, fast internet connection if you wanna have a good experience with cloud gaming. Now, battery life, browsing the web, doing light office tasks should last you around 12 to 16 hours depending on screen brightness and intensity of usage. Moderately demanding tasks such as Photoshop and video editing will drain the battery faster, but five to eight hours of these type of tasks should still be possible. If you want to drain the battery as fast as possible, running Cinemage R24 nonstop appears to drain the battery in about two and a half to three hours. Standby time is also excellent on the X Elite, allowing you to shut the laptop down and pick up where you left off the next day while only losing a small percentage of your battery. Now, overall, I can recommend the Galaxy Book 4 to users that want a fast, productive laptop away from the wall outlet. And those of you that want a premium, thin and light chassis, this just really excels in those categories. But hardcore gamers will probably wanna steer clear of this one. And also, if you have a ton of applications that you need to run, you're gonna wanna make sure you test all those applications and only buy this laptop from a store with a generous return policy so that you can return it if you can't run all the applications you need to. Microsoft's emulation layer is really good, but it's not 100% yet. And if you have a diverse application requirement, there will probably be some of them that aren't gonna run very well or might fail to launch. Links are in the description and in the pinned comment down below if you wanna pick up one of these Galaxy Book 4 Edges and support me and my team creating this content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Huzzah.